Hi everyone, I'm Tiny Pirate. Let's build it. Today we're going to plan a mission to Duna. I know a lot of people have trouble planning and organizing missions to go a long distance in Kerbal Space Program. Most of us have managed to get to the moon. Uh, perhaps let me know if you haven't. And I can create a tutorial for that too. But going a further afield can be a real challenge. There's the issues of planning the right amount of Delta V. There's the issues of not getting stranded when you get there and the issue of getting back home. So this tutorial is here to try and show you a little bit about my process and how I do it. We're going to look at designing a craft, then we're going to launch it and see how well it does. And I'm going to take you through all the steps from start to finish. Before we begin I should note that I'm using quite a few mods. They will be listed in the description below. And if you do plan to recreate my kind of approach to mission design I suggest you grab quite a few of them. In particular you'll want some kind of Delta V measuring tool, uh, Mechjeb or Kerbal Engineer will do the trick, and you can't go too far wrong with other tools like Kerbal Alarm Clock and the Interplanetary Transfer uh, Planning mod, all of which are very very helpful. I'm also playing with Deadly Reentry and the Real Shoots mod because I just particularly enjoy the kind of realism they bring to the table. So first up, how do we begin planning a mission? Now most of us just start throwing a few parts together willy-nilly hoping to come up with some sort of coherent structure that will make sense for the profile of the mission that we have in mind. But that's not really the best way to do things. I find it really helpful to sit back for a second and think about where you're going and how much energy it's going to take to get there. For me, planning often begins before I've even opened Kerbal Space Program. My preferred method is to pull up a Delta V map of the Kerbal system. You can see one now, it looks a lot like a tube map. And then I start thinking about my destination and how much Delta V it's going to take to get there. In this case, I get my piece of paper out. First of all, I name the ship the Roland Combs, because Roland likes to comment on a lot of our videos. Hello there, Roland. And then I start by looking at the trip I plan to take. I usually do so in reverse order, mostly so that I can think about the vessel from the top, the literal top of the vessel, all the way down to the bottom. The video on the right is captured by my five-year-old son, so please forgive the wobbles. What I'm doing here is starting with the pod, crash down, hopefully, safely, somewhere on Kerbin, and then thinking about how much energy I'm going to need to get all the way back to Duna, well, playing the mission in reverse, and then coming back again. So first of all, coming in, I'm going to be using the atmosphere of Kerbin to break me, so I don't need to worry about how much Delta V that'll take. The next step is I need 950 Delta V from the edge of Kerbin space. I need 130 to make it out to Duna Intercept, 250 to make it up from the elliptical orbit, and then I need 360 to go from low Duna orbit up to the elliptical orbit, and 1300 Delta V to make it off Duna itself. Going the other way, I need 360 to get down onto Duna, because I don't need to spend any Delta V to land. I'm going to try as much as possible to use parachutes. I need 250 to make it down to elliptical orbit. I need another 130 to have made it into Duna Intercept from the edge of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. 950 to make it out to the Kerbin Sphere of Influence from low Kerbin orbit. And I need 4550 Delta V to make it up from the surface of Kerbin. As you saw, the final Delta V budget for the mission was 9,230. I'm going to be rounding up a little bit as I work. So if all that was a little confusing, just keep in mind that we want to break the mission into several stages. I've worked out four kind of stages. The first one is get into orbit. That's going to take, and I'll round up here, 4,600 Delta V. The next one is get to Dune a low orbit. It's going to take 1800. And once I'm in Dune low orbit, it won't take much for me to get down to the surface. I'm going to try and parachute the whole way. Once we're at the surface, we'll need to take off again. I'm going to round up and say that'll take 1400 delta V. That'll get us up to low orbit. And then returning to low orbit on Kerbin will take another 1800 delta V. Let's throw in a little margin of error here. And we'll put the whole lot together and come up with 9600 meters a second delta V required in order to make it to Duna and back. If I'm feeling really conservative, I might add another 100 meters a second delta V to push that up to 9700. That should pretty safely get us to Duna and back, probably with a lot to spare. But hey, sometimes it's good to have a lot to spare. 
So now we need to start building our ship, the Roland Cones. I'm going to start with a big pot because, well, we want to get a lot of people to Duna. Have a good have a good tour around. As you'll see immediately, that what's popped up here uh, is I've got the Kerbal Engineer interface telling me a bunch of stats, none of which populated yet. Over here, I've got the wonderful fuse box mod, which tells me how much power the craft has, how much it generates, that sort of stuff. I find both of these very helpful, especially if you're using other mods which draw a lot of power, such as ScanSat or Remote Tech. For me, the next step is I'm going to have to throw a heat shield on this thing. There we go, simply because I'm planning not to burn up when I return. Okay, I'm looking at what could be quite a good return vessel from the influence of Duna to Kerbin's lower atmosphere. Mikjeb, which I prefer for having the two different types of Delta V, whether you're in an atmosphere or whether you're in a vacuum side by side, says that this will have 2482 meters a second. That should be more than enough to get from uh, Duna's low orbit back to Kerbin. But it's not really going to be enough to take off from Duna, which is the next problem we have to solve. I'm going to go with an approach whereby we strap on some rockets here. Because it does a couple of things for us. First of all, it makes the lander quite a bit larger and wider. And I do like having wide landers, simply so that I can more easily land them. At this point, I kind of have a question in my head. I could pipe these onto the main body, give myself even more delta V. Well, not that much more really. The weight of the tanks is pretty substantial. But I'm not sure that's going to be enough to give us a really good push off the uh, softer surface. So I'm kind of tempted to throw some rockets on it. 3500 should be more than enough to take off from Duna and get us back to Kerbin with just this arrangement here. We have got something we've forgotten about along the way here, and that is control. This is a big wieldy system. I'm going to want to throw some control surfaces on it. You'll do. The other thing we need to think about as well is batteries and solar panels. So this is a craft that will take off from Duna and get our astronauts back to Kerbin's atmosphere. It has a little over 3,000 delta V. By my estimates, it needs... now well, maybe just a little more. I'm a bit concerned that we haven't got enough margin for error. Let's throw some more fuel on the top. Now it might be time for some cosmetics. It's quite nice to land with some lights on. Yeah. That'll do. Always nice to see the ground. I, I always end up landing in the dark because I forget what I'm doing. Unfortunately, our Delta V is now back around 2,900 when it new, really needs to be 3,200. We're carrying a lot of mass here. Do we really need quite so much stuff? Well, I like carrying stuff, so I'd rather stick another fuel tank on, to be perfectly frank with you. I think this has just about everything the budding Duna Explorer would wish to take with them. We've got 3,400 Delta V, we have solar panels, we have parachutes galore. I'm hoping that counts as galore. We'll find out, I suppose. We have lights, very helpful. Monopropellant thrusters, boosters to get us off Duna's surface, and our unit which will take us back. Now the trick is to build the next stage of our interplanetary unit. So we're going to want to build the part which gets us to Duna. So to get to Duna low orbit, we're going to need 1800 Delta V. I reckon the stack will do the trick. 2200. Yep, that'll do the trick. Bit worried about all this mass. Need something to control it. Right, well I propose that this is looking pretty good for the interplanetary unit. For some reason my stats seem to have gone a bit wonky. Not quite sure why. They're not updating the way they were. 
But we'll assume that everything is hunky-dory and carry on with this regardless. Big decoupler. Thank you, Tweetscale, for fixing the size of that. Final part we need to work out is the bit that gets us into orbit. So this is going to be pretty mighty 4,600 delta V required. So time to throw together a big rocket. Dun, 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 dun. So this is the final version of the Roland Combs. You saw it take off at the start of this video, but I've made a couple of changes since the build video just earlier, so I thought I'd tell you about them. First of all, more fuel on the center stack. Just want to make sure we shed these tanks earlier. We shouldn't take that long to get out of Duna's atmosphere, so these things will give us a push. These things will do the work. Get us back to Kerbin. Thrown on a bunch more parachutes. Still haven't really bothered to calculate how much, how many parachutes I'll need for Duna. Figure that maybe quite a lot of them will be enough. I have also, just in case you're wondering, built a five meter stack down here. Thanks to the joys of tweak scale, which I've installed, I have scaled up these default tanks to five meters. That means I get quite a nice looking rocket without having to shove half a dozen uh, smaller, maybe asparagus stage rockets around the bottom. So this thing should be plenty ready to go to space. Let's, uh, let's see how it does. As you saw earlier, getting into orbit wasn't too much of a problem. I didn't pilot very well and I had to give it a little kick from the unit that's going to take us out to Duna, but it worked. It wasn't too bad. That's why we've got spare capacity, right? The next thing is to plan the transfer out to Duna. I used the transfer window planner, popped in the orbit I was in, popped in the orbit I was aiming for, uh, put on a no insertion burn tick because I plan to try and just uh, get very close to the atmosphere and use it to slow me down rather than do some kind of fancy orbital maneuvers and then plotted out an ideal course. So it suggested a time and date. I fast forwarded to that time and date using Kerbal Alarm Clock and then I plotted a course for Duna. Took a little while to fiddle with it but I've also got Precise Node installed and that with left and right click of the mouse lets you make very precise changes to your delta V plot for your maneuver. So in this case, Transfer Window Planner suggested somewhere in the vicinity of a 1050 delta V to make it out in a ballistic orbit. And I plotted that in and promptly executed the maneuver. If you haven't used Precise Node before, I highly recommend giving it a go if you do engage in a lot of interplanetary maneuvers. Yes, you can eyeball it, but between the Transfer Window Planner and Precise Node, you'll have a lot easier time of precisely entering the nodes that you need to get you somewhere you want to go. Now as I got close to Duna, I kind of made a mistake. I wasn't very careful about the insertion into the Duna sphere of influence. I should have tweaked it mid-flight to make sure that I got very close to Duna, perhaps even grazing atmosphere, so that I could ensure that I had a really easy uh, job of it when it came to braking. Atmospheric braking is a lot easier than a circularizing burn at the other end. In this case, after entering Duna's sphere of influence, we burned enough so that our trajectory would bring us in at about 15k above Duna. One of the problems with the orbit that I ended up coming in on is that it is over the poles, which means I don't have terribly much control over where I'm going to land on the surface, especially if I plan to aero brake the entire way down to the surface. Come in hot, straight off the curb and transfer, and go for a single burn to lower the orbit and drop down straight onto Duna. This will cause me problems, as you'll see later. In the end, the insertion burn dropped us in a really great altitude. We burned off a lot of speed coming down. Didn't even need the heat shields. Kind of a waste of time to bring those. So, we got this pretty early. Did a little bit of a burn to slow us down, but in the end, all the parachutes deployed properly, and they pretty much took us to the surface at optimal speeds. After a quick jaunt around the surface, we got back in the craft and planned to head home. Only problem was the transfer window planner suggested we needed to wait quite some time. So we did that. It was at least a year. Jebediah doesn't seem to mind. Takeoff went well with the side stages giving us a really good kick up and then the main body of the unit pushing us well clear of the atmosphere. The only problem we had leaving Duna was that because of our position somewhat north of the equator, we had a substantial burn to equalize and level off the orbit we achieved. This resulted in quite a lot more delta V being spent on positioning ourselves around Duna than I would have liked. 
this gave us a severely restricted amount of energy to return to Kerbin with, so I had to plot and then burn the course for Kerbin very carefully, making a couple of adjustments along the way to ensure we got as close as possible. In the end I plotted an interception course with Kerbin, which I was able to raise a little after we entered the sphere of influence, and we came in very fast and very hard straight into Kerbin's atmosphere. Very little delta V was left at the end of these maneuvers, so I'm pleased to say that our margin of error was exactly the right kind of margin. Reentry ended up burning through half of our heat shield, but all the crew made it safely back to Kerbin. Drinks on mission control at Jebediah's house. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you let us know in the comments below. Love to hear if you have any particular Kerbal problems that need some really detailed treatment such as this. I've been Tony Pirate. This has been Let's Build It with Pirate and Fade.